Good afternoon here from Chamonix. It's a good evening even uh, as the uh, sun sets. Here in Chamonix, we have got a little treat for you. And it's not people running around the mountains for the first time in the last two or three days. So um, one of the probably biggest challenges that the uh, elite athletes have at the UTMB is sitting through a press conference. And, uh, but it's kind of a necessary evil. It's good for the sponsors. It kind of feeds the journalists and away they go. So what we've done now is we've, uh, we've stolen Rory out of the uh, press conference at the end. And we promised a short interview for her fans at home all around the world who speak English or understand English. We're going to ask some stupid questions or some fun questions. Rory's going to give her insights into UTMB 2016. Yeah. And then we're going to let her go off and kind of ready for the UTMB, which is about 24 hours away. So good afternoon, Rory. Oh, bonjour, Keith. Yeah, I see you're in the language now. So, Comment allez-vous? Ah, très bien, merci à vous. Oh, oh, ah, hang on, we need to press the French button on I this know, channel now. Yeah. So yeah. So um, Rory. How was the press conference? Um, <laughs> do you want the truthful answer? Yeah, you come know, on. Yes. It wasn't, I'd say it uh, wasn't as uh, painful as childbirth sounds, but it uh, wasn't as painless yeah. as like Christmas morning opening presents. Hey, so Somewhere I've got, in between. I've got a question for you from the organizers. If you were in charge of the UTMB press conference in 2017, mm -hmm. what would you do differently? Uh, mandatory dancing. So like <laughs> if you get up on stage, you have to like get up there and do your best dance moves. So I want to see, I want to see a lot of you know like shopping carts lawn mowers I want to see right. all that going on it really spice things up okay that's good um, yeah I'm hearing they're, they're thinking of adopting that I think Catherine Proletti will be leading the dancing in 2017 I, I, bet, I bet Catherine's got right. rhythm man okay. she does so the last time I saw Rory it, she was running around the Dolomites at the end of June and for some dramatic reason mm -hmm. your tummy kind of uh, did, a, did some kind of trick so how are you doing now uh, oh I'm good that was Definitely like a food poisoning issue. It was gone in 36 hours. So, yeah, no, I feel good. So, is it true that Mike Foote was doing the cooking the night before <laughs> the Lavaredo Ultra well, Trail? Well, that would have been, I don't think he's that, uh, you know, sadomasochistic to also do it to himself. He, he was also, also sick, it, so, <laughs> so I don't think he was the culprit. So, yeah. All right. Okay, good stuff. So, uh, you, you're good? You're ready to go? Yeah. I'm do so, um, UTMB, um, any different approach this time to previously? I have a really bad memory, so I honestly don't remember what I did the other two. That was two years ago. I mean, that's like a lifetime ago. So I've just been here uh, over in Chamonix for five weeks and just living the French lifestyle, running in the mountains a ton, eating a bunch of gelato, wine, cheese, and having fun. And yeah, so it's been okay. great. So when I, I listening to the feedback of the the crowd and the organization and the volunteers about Rory Bozio running around the Mont Blanc, it's like this girl is she must be on something. She's just so California, rolling into the aid stations on a high. And I loved you were you were asked this question by Catherine Paletti after the race two years ago, uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I loved your reply to that. So for all those people that were not involved in that conversation, they were kind of asking you, Rory. What, what are you? What are you taking? Why are you like this when you come rolling into the aid stations at the at the UTMB? I can't remember what I said then, but I would just say that like I find my true happiness out on the trails, and I just feel so much like gratitude and love and joy when I'm out there that I just have to express it. And I feel like if you're outwardly happy, then you'll be inwardly happy. No, Key it, to success. Yeah, you know, and I think you, that, that was pretty much what you were saying. You were just like saying that you know, everything that is around you during the race gives you a natural high. Oh, definitely. And, uh, you know, and it's just very, na if someone's acting differently to the rest of everyone else, there's a natural reason. There's something wrong with that person or they're doing something that's not in the norm. But we know you better than that. Yeah, now, yeah. So, uh, My mom always said I was special. So. <laughs> yeah, special's a good word for yeah. that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Rory, uh, what team are you running with this year? I am running for the North Face. Oh, good. Yes. 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 Hey, what does the team do to help you? Uh, North Face, oh, they do a lot, man. I mean, not only do they keep me looking good and nice <laughs> shoes and everything, but they also provide, you know, these poor minions who have to crew me for the race, drive my friends around uh, from the aid stations. And I've been with the North Face now for, I don't know, six, seven years, something like that. So it feels like family to me and friends, and they just give you so much support. It's great. Are you trying to run this race this year the same way you've run it before? 
I, you know, I honestly haven't really thought about it too much, so I guess I should have a plan of attack. I'll start thinking about that tomorrow, maybe at like 5.58 on the start line. I'll think about what my strategy is, but um, when it comes to strategy and that kind of thing, I don't really have one. I just go out and run. So, so you're not <laughs> saying that you memorize your splits from the last time that you ran it and want to meet those or exceed I them? have a really hard time telling time, either digitally or <laughs> <laughs> analog, or you know. So I don't wear a watch and I don't remember know what my splits are. You don't wear a watch or a GPS a device or anything when you run? No, I do not. So yeah. I think uh, Laura, who's uh, going to be uh, the support crew for, yes. uh, for Rory during the race, is going to be a case of, hey, you're doing well. What I remember from Rory on the course before is that even if you tell Rory, Rory, you're one hour ahead of second place, she doesn't believe you. So it doesn't matter what you say. <laughs> if it's not what she wants to hear, she's not going she's gonna to ignore it anyway. That's true. That's and true. And so you don't mind if your crew members were uh, uh, watching oh, keep track of sure. things? Oh, sure. That's They can keep track of things. Okay, I just don't want to know. I All mean, right. it doesn't affect how I run, so I don't feel like a watch should do dictate how I run. Oh. All right. Yeah. So um, in the press conference, the... Uh, Wait, that said, Cartier, if you want to sponsor me, <laughs> go for it. I will wear your watches. Or you could just put the watch on at the end just before the finish line. That's kind of uh, how to do it. Yeah. So in the press conference, there was one semi-series moment where the organizer was saying, this race is going to be incredibly hot. And we've already seen in the TDS that of the 1,700 runners that began the race, uh, over 700 of those runners actually pulled, mm -hmm. be predominantly because of the heat. And um, so are you concerned about the heat or is that just another little challenge along the way? Um, I not. I mean, I actually don't love running in the heat, but I also think so. It's supposed to be about 30 degrees, so it's about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And so I've done Western States uh, running race in California a few times, and 30 degrees would be a cold year there. So uh, I feel like I've had experiences in the heat where sure. it's more like 40 degrees, 42 degrees. Yeah. And I've learned how to manage it, and I've already bought tons and tons of water for my crew people to dump on me. And you know, there's tons of streams and stuff out there, so. Yeah. So yep. just make it so you're like running through a shower and you should be good. That evaporative cooling effect. Yeah, and that was, uh, I think we've already seen it in one or two of the races today. They've been setting up these big kind of spray showers yeah. uh, like you would normally see in the road marathon. So, uh, and they're encouraging everyone to get wet. You know, yeah. historically you wouldn't, don't get wet because it's not a good thing in the mountains, but they're encouraging everyone to get uh, wet this year because they are really worried about uh, yeah. the effect of the heat. That and um, you just have to pay, I think, a little bit more attention to your electrolyte balance and just make sure you're getting in, yeah. you know, plenty of salt. Yeah. and that kind of thing. Yep. So there you go, Laura. Yeah. Keep an Do you have any one. advice yeah. that you would give to the uh, people who are mid-packers or late uh, runners, the ones who are going to finish, say, in 40 to 46 hours? You've seen them finish before. You've yeah. been back to the finish line. Very emotional, very inspiring. Yeah, so wh what, what, what advice would you have to those who are listening in on that? Well, I would say just, first of all, take the stress off yourself. Like, look at it. Don't maybe frame it. It's all about perspective. Don't maybe frame it as a race so much as it's like a personal adventure. And if you're going out there and the heat is really starting to bother you, it's okay to slow down, like it's not the end of the world. Just slow down, take care of yourself. Um, maybe take a little bit more time at the aid stations and just don't stress the small stuff and just try and enjoy it, enjoy it out there because you have to remind yourself of why you came over here. We're surrounded by these beautiful mountains, really nice people who are out there encouraging you and you should just feel gratitude towards the mountains and the people and then you'll run better. Great, great. So I think we're, we're going to try and wrap up with a couple more questions. I've, I've already got my question in the, in the pocket. and I I'm a Leo. I like long walks on the beach, <laughs> Italian dinners, no, those no, kind no. of questions. No, it's not uh, Miss California. <laughs> Sorry, Rory. <laughs> so uh, I, the last two days I've been watching the runners come in for the TDS and the, uh, the OCC, and uh, I'm convinced that most runners have a finishing strategy, mm -hmm. and the ones that don't really need to start thinking of one. So mm -hmm. Rory, so the, the obvious question is, do you have a finishing strategy? And uh, if not, you better start thinking, working on one. And I just want to say that Keith believes every runner should have a finishing strategy, regardless of where they finish in the race. So whether you're a front runner, an elite runner, a mid packer, a late runner, a finishing strategy is required for everyone. This guy here, now we're watching, just happened to be on the screen right now, we're watching the he watch looks this, like, watch he's like he's, watch this finishing yes. strategy. He's like, I want to run like look. Usain Bolt. I am that. sprinting across the line. That is incredible. Yeah. So that's that's one finishing strategy. Yeah. So uh, I my finishing strategy is I picture myself like what makes me super super happy, and that's just like at the end of the finish line. I just have to get there to get to that happiness yeah. thing. And so I picture myself moving and grooving and dancing with my friends on the dance floor, and I'm like, that's just beyond the finish line. You got to get to that. 
So, so that's there, my is, goal. there is the iconic. It's the carrot on the stick. There is the iconic photo of you two years ago at the finishing line, kind of with your legs slightly crossed, kind of almost bowing to the crowd. It was so r regal and majestic. So it's like, yeah, Ru see, you do have a fish finishing strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't even realize they have one. So we get to watch everyone finish it. Yep, finishing strategy, it might be the flag. So uh, Well, the curtsy was because, you know, <laughs> Prince Harry is still single. So I thought if I presented myself like a lady, yeah. maybe he'd be like, she's okay to present yeah. to the queen so yeah. I can take her home. Yeah. It hasn't worked out right. so far, but call me yeah. Harry. Cool. <laughs> So and uh, so, Rory, we give so hopefully everyone's uh, wide awake now in uh, North America. Yeah, uh, it's that yes. time of the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get to say your kind of uh, cheerios and uh, whatever you want to say to anyone back home. Oh, really? I'd like to <laughs> say hi to all of my favorite people: uh, Phoenix, Jax, Levi, Stella, Hazelnut, also known as Hazel, Laney. I think I got everybody in there. Wait, see: Phoenix, Jax, Levi, Stella, Hazel, Laney. Yeah. Hi to all of you. Cool. Cause a lot of trouble right. and give your parents headaches. Love you. They're all toddlers. So yeah, so we're brilliant, and they, <laughs> they, they, you're the perfect inspiration for them, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, so we're, Randy, you good? Are you I'm good. Else? Yes. So Let's, yeah, so Rory, Rory delightful just, to talk to yeah, you. And Thank it, you. It leaves us. We as always, we're going to be here cheering you on. We're going to be informing all your fans at home what's going, oh, who can't be here, and um, yeah, we hope to see you with your finishing strategy uh, yeah, me on too. Saturday afternoon. Yeah. yeah, you know what they say, win or lose, we always booze. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing you're famous for, yeah. Saturday night yeah. down the party. So yeah, yeah, we no need to join what. you there as well, exactly. Great. So, All right. Rory. All right, thanks for being here. Big Cheers. thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes.